second of today's, well, uh, kind of like, the last of today's countries, and yeah, we're on Bhutan, finishing off, kind of finishing off more Central Asia, Central South Asia, and yeah, and the Indian subcontinent. So yeah, here we go with Bhutan, and as yeah, here we start off with history now. And by the 1500 BC, people lived in Bhutan by herding animals, and by the 7th century AD, Buddhism was introduced into Bhutan. And in the 8th century, an Indian named Padmasam Bahava did much to encourage the spread of Buddhism in Bhutan. Now, since Buddhism has been an integral part of the culture of Bhutan, but however, for centuries, the Bhutan, people of Bhutan were disunited. Point, weren't really knighted. And in 1616, Gawang Nam Gyal became a spiritual leader of Bhutan, and he took the title Sabdrung Rinpoche, and under him, Bhutan became a united country, as he also divided governments of Bhutan into a spiritual, and spiritual and secular, as the Sab Drung was a spiritual leader while a person called the Desi ran the secular administration. And meanwhile in 1624 two Portuguese Jesuit priests became the first Europeans to visit Bhutan. And in the 18th century the era of political instability in Bhutan where many Desi were assassinated. Meanwhile the British were becoming increasingly powerful within India. As Bhutan first made a treaty with the British in 17. 74, but however, Britain and Bhutan quarrelled over Duas, like the lowest hills in Bhutan, as war finally broke out in 1864. And after the war, the British took Duas, took the Duas, as in, and then in 1907, Ogien Wanchuk was elected king of Bhutan, and then in 1910, Bhutan and Britain signed a treaty as Britain agreed not to interfere in internal affairs of Bhutan, as long as the Bhutanese accept British advice on its external relations. And in 1947, when India became independent, and in 1949, India signed a treaty with Bhutan, as India not to, agreed not to interfere with Bhutanese affairs, as long as Bhutan accepted Indian advice on internal affairs. Advice and actions are two different things, as in the nine and in the nineteen sixties, Bhutan ended its isolation as Bhutan joined the Colombo Plan in nineteen sixty two and joined the Universal Postal Union in nineteen sixty nine. And then in later in ninety two years later in nineteen seventy one joined the UN. And meanwhile the King of Bhutan introduced a number of reforms, although he was keen to preserve Bhutanese traditions. The king created a national assembly and the Royal Bhutanese Army. And in 1999, satellite TV was allowed into Bhutan for the first time. And in the early 21st century, Bhutan became a democratic country and in 2005, King unveiled a new constitution. And the first democratic elections for parliament were held in 2008. And but today, Bhutan is an overwhelmingly agricultural society. And, and any industry is a cottage industry, and today the population is about somewhere around 741,000. Yeah. Moving on to language, as it's really short, as it's literally a decent, like a small par small to medium sized paragraph. As Zonka and Sha Chop are the main languages of Bhutan, and the land of the Thunder Dragon is a rich, culturally rich place. and does not practically work with star or with equal division and land among sons and daughters. As equal educational rights are given to both boys and girls, giving a comparatively open environment to war. As Buddhism is the main religion followed in Bhutan, and more than 10,000 monks religiously follow it, and most of the festivals involve a lot of dance, pomp, and show. And the culturally rich land of Buddhist believes in the reincarnation and karma. Uh, with languages, I think Song Kai is like a more of an oral tradition, more of an oral language, while Sha Shop is more of a written language. And yeah. And yeah, 
moving on to legends. Next way, high up between the peaks of the Himalayas lies Bhutan, the land of thunder and dragon. In the 12th century, during the construction of the Tibetan monastery, a roll of thunder was heard. Something interpreted as being of the voice as a voice of a dragon. Since then, Bhutan's national symbol symbol has been a dragon. And for more than a thousand years, this little kingdom has survived as a in self-imposed isolation, cut off from the world by its own deliberate policy. It's perhaps why so many of Bhutan's legends still remain clear, as many buildings of the village and of Punaka, a monastery castle with a strategically built at the meeting of two rivers, as Punaka Zong was Bhutan's winter capital over 300 years. Legend says that Guru Pasha blessed the land and predicted the, constru- predicted the construction of a fortress here. And in 1637, when Poche came here to set up camp and on the same night had a prophetic dream. And this prompted him to build a zone there and to store within the most sacred relic that he had brought with him from his monastery in Tibet. And this relic was a Avo Kaitsvava statue, a relic. Rats was claimed to have miraculously appeared from nowhere. And angered by the relocation of this relic, the Tibetans attacked the monastery, however, the Bhutanese successfully defended it, and the victory is celebrated each year. Between March and February, as a sacred victory festival in Punaka, and situated on a hill in the Punaka Valley, surrounded by paddy fields and the idyllic. Chimi Lahaka Manga, a temple that is a place of pilgrimage for infertile women. In 1499, a monastery was built over an ex- existing stupa that had been created by the controversial Saint Drupa Drupka Kunle, also known as the Saint of 5000 Women. Drupka Kunli believed that it was possible to refrain from celibacy despite being enlightened, and even argued that sex could be a means of imparting enlightenment. That's the reason that women seek Derpa Kunli blessing at Jimmy Rankang. And just off the road in the Pro Paro Valley lies a path that leads to one of the most remote monasteries in the world. From curve to curve, there's a tiger's mon- nest monastery slowly comes into view to the visitor who embarks on the arduous ascent up to the mountain monasteries. At 2,950 metres above sea level, this monastery is said to be the spot where Guru Rinpoche landed triumphantly on the back of a flying tigress. As Rinpoche created, who is credited with introducing the Tantric strain of Buddhism in Buddhism to Bhutan arrived here, here around the 8th century. And on arrival, Rinpoche was said to have meditated in the network of caves here for three years, a process that made the mountainside sacred and taming the tigress. So, yeah, sorry, it's a little short, but it's small, but small bay. But in a very intriguing country, you know? and yeah, and I'll see you all later, you know. So yeah, but I need to know. So bye for now.